Okay, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. Are, are you? Uh, how are you guys doing? So, the, before we start our English class today, I'm going to check your attendance first. Right. Adiasta Kanaya, present. Ahza Filza Rahman, present. Alvina Nadira Tafana. Anung Ashfa Gantari. Danisha Shifa Amelia. Fatian Akbar Al Ghafani, Gaza Adiasta Naswa, Kanaya Katia Luna, Keisha Talita Saki, Hanza Tafana Kamila, Mahes Waria Luna Melody, Muhammad Ryan Alvaro Sefir. Rashad Faizullah, Saha Altaf Muhammad, Sharifah Yasmin, Sherly Khalisa, Zarin Altafusina, Adam Kurniawan, Zaskia Salma Zuhri. Okay, so. All right, kids, now that I check all the attendance, let's be silent for a moment and let's pray so that we can have a good learning process. Praying start now. Okay, praying is done. So today uh, we are going to learn about the poem that is love philosophy and its literary uh, literary aspect or the vice. Okay. So first I'm going to show you the poems and after that I'm going to recite it for you guys.
All right, so this is Law Philosophy by Percy by Cicely. I'm gonna recite it for all of you. Law Philosophy by Percy by Cicely. The fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet motion. Nothing in this world is single, all things by the law divine. In one spirit meet and mingle, why not I die? See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves collapse at one another. No sister flower will be forgiven if it disdain its brother. And the sunlight claps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What is all this sweet world worth if thou kiss not? Okay, so that is the philosophy by Percy by Cicely. And, uh, Love Philosophy is a poem by the British Romantic poet Percy Bysshe Shelley, first published in 1890. The poem is a kind of seductive argument offering proof of a divine law that the world is full of interconnectedness and that, therefore, the speaker and the person whom the speaker is addressing should become uh, connected. They should become connected to dominated by its central conceit that love is a kind of union replicated in the natural and spiritual realms. The poem has a more in common with works by 17th century metaphysical poets such as John Donne, The Flea, and Andrew Marvels, the, to his Chui Koi mistress, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, then with the works by the by the romantic poets of Shelley days, and indeed, to Shelley other poems. Uh, through clever constructed image and metaphors, poets like Don and Marvel sought to make the acceptance of an romantical proposal. Seems like the only logical response, the same approach adopted by Shelley here. So, uh, how do you guys think about that point? Maybe any question like, a vocabulary that you never heard. Uh, let's, let's see. Um, how about law divine? So, the law divine in this poem refers to a kind of natural law created by God. And mingle is to mingle means to mix, but has but also has a connotation of socializing and dine. Dine is, a, is an archaic form of yours. Let's see. Claps. So, claps means to hold or to huge tightly. And sister flowers? So, sister flower here is refers to uh, female flowers, which form a sexual union with the brothers of flowers. Well, in, in reality, most flowers or plants have both sexual organs on them, though there are some species with separate male or female flowers too. And this thing. To disdain something or someone is to treat it as if it's unworthy of an intention. Though. So, though is an archaic form of you, and that's the vocabulary that you guys might haven't know yet. Now you know. So, any question? Like maybe what the summary of this poem? So, uh, this poem is a famous romantic, uh, famous romantic uh, poems. And it's also one of the best love poems. It was uh, this poet draws the graphic picture of togetherness of all things in nature. The popularity of the poem 
rest in its presentation of love philosophy in terms of human intimacy parallel to the binding cosmic force. Uh, again, any question? How about um, the theme? What do you guys think about this poem theme? So, the, the theme, this poem, Love Philosophy, is a playful seduction poem in which the speaker, who has traditionally been thought of as a man, we, we thought this speaker is a man, but whose gender is, in fact, unspecified. The, the speaker tries to woo their prospective lover by pointing out that the way the nature in general seems to follow a divine law that dictates universal mingling and connectedness. Put more uh, consecrately, the speaker used the tendency of nature to come together. Rivers flowing into the ocean, the mixing of the winds in the sky, to argue that physical intimacy between people is simply following the laws of nature. As such, the speaker and the Yadrisi shall form their own physical union. The poem uses a deliberate logical structure to make its argument. Each stanza points out evidence from the natural world of two beautiful natural elements coming together. Uh, these examples are designed to make the make the coming together of the speaker and their lover, therefore, seems like the only logical thing to do as well as beautiful and natural. In the first stanza, for instance, the speaker points out the, the, way, the way that fountains become rivers, which in turn join up with the ocean. These different uh, bodies of water mingle, meaning that they all mix together. This is the first example of the key idea of the poem Philosophy of Love. Nothing in this world is single. And accordingly to the speaker, the speaker asks, why should they and their prospective lover similarly mingle? So, the poem is littered with other examples of this intermingling between natural elements. In line 9, the mountains kiss, another, a subjective word of choice, the sky. In the line 10, waves collapse one to one another. The speaker used flower as another example in lines 11 and 12. Specifically, looking at the way flowers pollinate, I mean, literally, a form of reproduction. The speaker then further assert that the above example illustrate not just the way things are in nature, but that nature is just one part of the world governed by a law divine that decrees that everything in the natural, spiritual, and emotional worlds must meet and mingle. In other words, the speaker suggests that togetherness is a kind of godliness, not just a natural law, but divine one too. The speaker used language that in ways both subtle and not support this idea, referring not to the sky, no, but always to the heaven. While the sunlight and moonlight described as, a, as clasping and kissing the earth, and sea can be seen as representing the union between things of nature and things of heaven, the light of the sun and the moon. So, uh, as the speaker, given that this coming together is not just the way the world works, but the way in which it expresses its divinity, how could I mean, how could two of them, the speaker and the adversary, not follow suit, not follow the law? The speaker, the speaker even present the above as a kind of duty. If the world is full of divine togetherness, it does the world a uh, disservice not to join in their own natural and divine union. Like, what is all this sweet work? That is the beautiful unity of the world. War. If though 
he is not me. Okay, so uh, the Shelley poems fit into a long line of seduction poem in which the speaker follow a conceit, playfully presenting evidence of their argument in an attempt to make getting together the only logical response. Meanwhile, to what degree the speaker actually believed the argument being made? To what extent the speaker once actually believed in a divine law, commanding kiss as a beautiful natural act, or rather just want to seduce an object of desire? It is never made entirely clear. All right, guys. Uh, any any question about this poem before we move on to the main to the main to our main material? How about the poem form? Okay, so uh, form this this poem follow a regular form. It is consists of two stanza. As you can see, each of which is an eight-line octave, the poem is an argument of seduction with the speaker based on the idea that the world is full of interconnectedness prescribed by a divine law. The structure of the poem supports the speaker efforts as the poem itself is full of structural pairs. It has two structurally harmonious stanzas. It has many lines paired together through enjambment. It has two rhetorical questions that end each stanza, and so on. So the speaker, of course, wants to be part of a pair with the address and filling the poems with pairs of helps. Filling the poems with pairs helps reinforce this attempt uh, at seduction. In terms of construction of the poems seductive argument both stanza are very similar essentially they present evidence of the interconnectedness of the world like i said before and conclude with a rhetorical question that makes clear the reason for the speaker's words in the first place there is a key difference there's a key difference though the first stanza explicitly state the divine law the law divine which govern the speaker argument that all things are in union with one another. Having stated this, the second stanza, second stanza here, personify its subject more intensely, with more sexually subjective imagery and language. Now, uh, we are going back to our main topic that is literary aspect or device of love philosophy. Before, so before we talk about literary aspect or device of love philosophy, we need to know first what is literary device. Literary device is used to bring richness and clarity to the text. The writers and the poets use them to make their text appealing and meaningful. Shelley has also used some literary device in this poem to convey intended meanings. So, I'm going to give you guys uh, the analysis of some of the literal device used in this poem. Uh, first is rhetorical question. Rhetorical question is a question that is not asked uh, that is not asked to be received an, an, as an answer. Rhetorical question is a question that is not asked to receive an answer. Instead, it is asked to, for an explanation or clarity. Shelley has posed a rhetorical question at the end of both stanza to emphasize uh, he or her point, his or her point. Like, for example, why not I would die? It is a rhetorical question at the end of the first stanza. And personification. Personification means to accord human characteristic to inanimate or animate objects. Shelley has used personification such as the mountains mingle with the river, the mountains kiss high heaven, 
and moonbeams kiss the sea, and the waves clasp one another. Here, the fountains, mountains, and waves, and moonbeams, uh, I'm sorry, are given human abilities like kissing, clasping, and mingling with one another, like human legs. And next, the vice is consonants. So, what is consonant? Consonants is the repetition of consonant songs, the cons of consonant sounds, in the same line such as the sound of R in no sister flower will be forgiven, and S in sound in and an S sound in see the mountains kiss hike heaven. Next is metaphor. So the poet has used extended metaphor in the poems to establish the idea that the, the that love is spiritual. For example, uh, fountains mingle with the rivers, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. Here, the bonds of natural objects represent his idea of love. Next is assonance. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds in the same line such as the sound of a, a in and the waves claps one another and E sound in and the rivers with the ocean. Next is imagery. The use of imagery makes the reader understand the writer's feeling and emotion. Shelley has used visual uh, Shelley has used visual imagery in this poem such as fountains mingle with the river and the sunlight claps the air and sense of touch in the waves claps one another and the, and see the mountains kiss high heaven. Uh, next is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of the same consonant, uh, consonant sounds, the same length such as the use of N sound in one spirit meet and mingle, and the sound of W in what is all this sweet world word. Next is hyperbole. Hyperbole is a figure of speech in which the, the writer uh, purposely exaggerates something. Shelley has used this device in the fifth line where it is stated as nothing in, this, nothing in the world is single. Here the writer exaggerates loneliness. Okay, so the, those... Okay. Uh, those analysis, uh, those analysis show that Shelley has a beautifully used literary device to stress upon the theme of love and the need for a beloved. Oh yeah, and there is also something called the poetic device. So, what's the difference between the poetic and the literary device? Poetic and literary device uh, basically, I mean, are the same, but a few are used only in poetry. Uh, so, I'm going to give you guys uh, the analysis of some of the poetic device used in this poem. First, the stanza. So, you may, you may also have heard what is a stanza. So, a stanza is the poetic form of some line. There are two stanza with eight lines in each stanza. And next is rhyme scheme, the rhyme scheme. The usage of word in a way to create a musical effect. It can be internal rhyme or end rhyme. Love philosophy uh, has a highly regular rhyme scheme. Each stanza runs A, B, A, B, and C, D, C, D. In other words, uh, each line is paired with another line uh, through rhymes. The A rhymes in line 1 to the A rhyme in line 3. Uh, 
the rhyme the the B rhyme in the line two and the and to the B rhyme in line four, and so forth. Uh, as with many other other of the techniques used in this poem, in which a speaker seeks to seeks to pair off physically with with an address. The rhyme scheme also creates pair. In this way, the rhyme scheme subtly reinforced and exemplifies the divine law that the speaker is saying exists and is the basis for why the addressee should go along with this attempted seduction. Uh, to be no uh, note that not all of the rhymes in the poem are full of rhymes, like river and ever, for example, or heaven and forgiven. But even this uh, uh, occasional slant rhymes serve to emphasize the other perfect rhymes. Once uh, especially important, full rhyme is the final one, in which C is rhyme with me. The, the purity of this rhyme gives the last line a sense of conclusion and completion as of the speaker argument is now done and there is all left to do is inevitably is to kiss so next is end rhyme end rhyme is used to make the stanza melodious the following rhymes like river ever ocean and emotion make the poems flow efficiently and also give a pleasant effect while reciting Next is stress and unstressed syllable. These two types of syllables are used in uh, trochi, uh, such as the first in stress and the second is unstressed syllable in love philosophy. This pattern is used in the entire poems, like for example, see the mountains, his high, and heaven. Uh, okay. So, what do you guys think? I mean, do you have any question? If you if you don't, uh, now I want to give you guys a test that is to write and find me another romantic poem, and I want you uh, I want you guys to make the literary aspect or the vice analysis of the poem we just found, and don't forget that. This task have a time limit. I will give uh, each of you guys. Uh, I will give you guys thirty minutes to do it, and you may also discuss it with each other if you like to. And okay, I'm gonna give you time. All right. Uh, Time's out, guys. Uh, are you all? Uh, uh, are all of you have already finished it? Please, the class leader, to collect all of your friends' work and give it to me. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for doing it on time. You guys done great. And all right. Thank you for having me in this class. Don't forget to study this again in your home because we will discuss it again briefly. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.